100 miles, 160 kilometers, a benchmark for many a cyclist. Is it possible though to go in under three hours for that distance? Well, today is the day we might just find out. And he's going to do it. Up, 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 up. Go on, John. Go on, John. <laughs> Now, today is the day that I could be witnessing uh, cycling history. We're following a project called Sub Three Hours, which is where Jonathan Schubert is gonna try and break the three hour, 100 mile time trial record, which is unassisted. So that's no drafting. He's gotta carry his food and water. So we're just off to Milton Keynes, which is just north of London here in the UK, and he's cycling to Norwich. Now, the reason we're doing it today is because we're coming off the back end of a big storm. And the wind that's been pushing all this wind north easterly direction, it's kind of kept with us today, but we've got blue skies, so it's a perfect day, perfect conditions. Hopefully that wind might just see Jonathan go under that sub three hour mark. Boy, am I excited. This could be the day that we see huge chapters of cycling history get absolutely smashed by a regular man, a teacher, a scientist, a time trialist. Oh, it's got me excited already. Jonathan is a scientist, teacher and athlete. His Palmares includes the 2018 world record for crossing Oman. In 2014, he broke the British 24-hour time trial record. He's also circumnavigated the planet back in 2013. I would also mention that Jonathan has already broken the unassisted 100-mile time trial record, a record that has stood since 1993, with a time of 3 hours, 8 minutes and 15 seconds. But this time, he wants to go under three hours. How are you feeling? Are you up for it? Are you feel I'm, I'm apprehensive. <laughs> yeah. It's you're kind of stepping into the unknown. I, I already have the record, but it's, it's the challenge of being the first man to ever ride 100 miles in under three hours without drafting, which is really strange because normally you're racing other people or you're racing a record that someone else has set. But I'm just, I'm simply racing, racing a time, you know, and it's, that's, that's a position I've never been in before. Well, the wind is definitely blowing, which is definitely gonna be on your side. Is that uh, one of the, the thought process of doing it on today? Absolutely, so everything is virtually the same other than when, when I set the record of three hours and eight minutes last time. Um, so we've had all the data, we knew what to play around with and we knew if a wind came, because it's a straight out, out course, we're gonna hit from here near Milton Keynes all the way to Norwich. If the wind came, then I'm gonna go a heck of a lot faster and it, it seems like Sub two hours is possible, perfect tailwind. We're looking at about 28 miles an hour average speed on that tailwind, so yeah, it's gonna be crazy. And I mean, how often do you get the opportunity to ride 100 miles with a tailwind and not have to ride back into it? Oh, that's, well, that's, that's exciting. That's the absolute dream. Right. So it's worth mentioning that this is done by the RRA, which is the Road Record Association. So in order to make sure it's a proper record and we abide by the rules, we've got two follow cars. So we've got two timekeepers. One's gonna stick behind him at all times. And then with about 20 miles to go, they're gonna jump forward and head to the finish. That way the finish isn't missed. And the other car is then gonna come in behind and they're gonna take over the timekeeping. No cars are allowed to pass them except the average public. So I'm gonna be jumping forwards to be able to get a few glimpses as he shoots past and then we're going to leave a cameraman in the back of the car so you'll be able to see every little bit of what goes on with the commissaires and their timekeeping and hopefully he's going to stay on track to go under this uh well this ominous under three hour hundred mile mark four three two one go up 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 go on john, go on, john. Jonathan is off. It's been a bit of a race to uh, to catch him now. He's travelling at some speed already, and to think we're only three miles in is what well, quite incredible. But he's definitely using that wind. So the wind is averaging around 28 miles per hour all 
in that north easterly direction. I'm coming up to the follow vehicles now, and it's quite incredible how fast he's going already. Two miles in and disaster strikes. His chain has just dropped off. In order to get it back on that massive 62 tooth chain ring, Jonathan has to dismount. This is a gasping moment for Jonathan and the team. The biggest time lost here is just getting back on the bike and back up to speed. I'm hoping this isn't going to come back to haunt him later on the attempt. So it looks like Jonathan's on course. Just seen him fly past. We've been going, we've been going 20 minutes and he looks like he's sitting at that good average about 35 miles per hour, which is what, well, over 55 kilometers per hour. Absolutely unreal. So I'm gonna shoot on and try and catch him up. It's an OS map and it just gives you the travelling speed in MPH and we have a little circle here which tracks the route where we're going um, and that's tracking us not the rider which is just in front of us. Yep. Um, at the Black Cat roundabout, 29 minutes 39 seconds, 4 minutes 21 seconds up, which builds well. So I'm currently sitting behind the follow vehicles and my speedometer is saying I'm going 37 miles per hour. So it's coming up to 40 miles per hour at some points. And we're on a slight incline. This is outrageous. Literally outrageous. Tipping 43 miles per hour subsections. And we're going on a slight incline around 2%. This is mad. We've now come onto a single carriageway. Um, the danger is we can't pull over to the side enough to let following traffic pass. So what we'll do is we've gone ahead of the rider now. Um, when we regain the dual carriageway, we'll find a lay-by and pull in and then get back behind the rider again and resume position. Um, but what we don't want to do along here is hold the traffic up behind. You get some of it irate. And also John will get a tow from the traffic as it goes past, so it's counterproductive. He's just behind, so I'm going to try and swing in and get a glimpse. Woo! He is going fast. Coming up to an hour in, and it's just a battle just to stay with him. Checkpoint 36.1. Right. Time is 61.48. Okay. Now, as I'm following this route, you can really tell that this route is being thought out meticulously. Every little detail, following the right direction, getting the tarmac right, and the weather, the distance, the traffic, how many junctions, how many stoplights. It's all been planned to every little detail because it's all down to the minutes, the seconds. Every little bit of time wasted sat at a junction is going to eat in to the record time. The route, the weather and the speed has all been calculated. But let's take a close look at the bike that Jonathan is riding. So John, just talk us through uh, your bike. Well, actually, actually the, the frame set is over a decade old. So everyone thinks you need cutting edge, you know, the latest bikes. But this was designed by a fella from Formula One called Simon Smart. And he said at the time when he came out with this, you know, it was, it was leagues ahead of anything else. And he still claims it's one of the best frames he's ever come up with. Uh, it's got a nose cone on it, which was banned by the UCI for a while. I think you're, you're allowed them again now. So I had no issues with using this old frame. I know it works. I've been aero testing on this bike for a long time. We've got a massive chain ring on the front that's 62 tooth. Uh, oversized uh, jockey wheels, uh, pulley arm. Having the big chain ring keeps, keeps the chain 
more central in the on the cassette at the back so you don't have uh, you're not losing a few watts with a bad chain line and you haven't got these tight bends uh, around the jockey wheels as well so more efficient the pedals these are uh, speed plays zero arrows so they're, they're in they're flush and in line with the bottom of the shoe and and actually the moving parts in the air are really important to kind of smooth the airflow over so people sometimes um, fail or neglect to realize how important those things are so just small things like that make a big difference these these bars these um, project sub three bars I designed those myself for this record attempt and they they hug the profile of my forearm they are not UCI legal but they're cycling time trials legal in the UK also legal for Ironman triathlon events and and they were definitely we did some aero testing on those they were giving me some quite substantial gains uh, I'm running, running tubeless uh, technology on the front clincher. It's got a better interface between the rim and, and the tire than a, a tubular has. Um, putting the hydration, I, I was wearing a camelback bladder and, and that shape on the front is also helping to, to um, distribute the airflow effectively around me and, and reduce drag bottle on the back. So I think those are some of the, you know, so you turn the brake levers in as well to be in line with the handlebars. So all these, all these little things, they all add up. So I'm noticing here, you've got your, uh, your taped up crank arm. Just explain a little bit about that. Yeah, I think, like I was saying, the, the moving parts are some of the most important. Uh, those that are rotating in the air to, to clean the airflow over. So yeah, just simply taped over the top of any, um, any bolts uh, all over the bike, but particularly the chain set. And talking of tape, now I've done a little bit of research. Your first disc wheel wasn't actually a proper disc wheel, was it? So when I, when, I was, when I was a student, I was training as a teacher and I was living in Wales, I didn't have much money. And I had a clever idea because I couldn't afford a disc wheel to use parcel tape uh, to put around my spokes and, and build this disc wheel. And I would turn up to races and people would laugh at me. Um, and usually I would quite quickly overtake them. And then a week or so later, you'd see other people trying to make their own homemade uh, sellotape disc wheels. But I've moved on a little bit from that now and I've got a proper, proper disc wheel. might be thinking is how on earth is Jonathan able to eat, drink and hold that aerodynamic position for so long and he's done a lot of big endurance time trials, 24 hour champ, but he's done loads of things of sitting in this aerodynamic position so he's quite used to it. The other thing worth noting is that he's got his camelback in the front of his skin suit. Now normally you'll see camelbacks on the back in rucksack or something similar but he's got his down the front of his skin suit so he can keep hydrated so it's easy to keep hydrated without moving position but it's also to make himself even more aerodynamic so you'll see that it's actually closing that gap in the in the middle between his head and the bike and if you close that gap you're actually making yourself even more aerodynamic you're keeping that airflow a little bit smooth smoother and reducing that aerodynamic drag which is basically what a time trial is up against so everything has really been thought about right now I'm going to shoot ahead to see if I can get another glimpse Looks like Jonathan's on schedule. He's got about 45 minutes left and around 25 to 27 miles to go. He looks like he's gonna smash it. So I'm gonna hurry on and get to the finish. Woo, what a ride. Yeah, I saw that. So it's 17 miles to Norwich. 
He's starting to slow, but he's still holding amazing pace. So I'm praying he's gonna do it. I'm coming up to him now. You can see he's stretching a bit. He's feeling uncomfortable. He's obviously getting sore and stiff and muscles are starting to fatigue. I'm hoping he's just able to hold this power. He's done so well and he's only got 32 minutes left. Come on, John, you can do it. Right, Jonathan, I'm just getting word that he's on for around a 256, 258. So it is gonna be seriously close. He's got around about 11 miles to go. So it really is touch and go now. I'm gonna try and see him for a last swing in. See him for the last little bit before I rush to the, to the finish. to Norwich with five minutes to go now and I'm hoping he's gonna come around that corner within the next three four minutes this is where it all counts it's all down to this moment now can he do it or can he not oh it's a bit it's a bit weird right four minutes now he's got four minutes to go Wow, the three hour barrier has been broken with a time of two hours, 57 minutes and 58 seconds. Let's take a quick look at the stats from this incredible performance. John averaged a speed of 33 miles per hour, 54.3 kilometers per hour. His max speed he reached was an insane 47.9 miles per hour, 77 kilometers per hour. He averaged a power of 279 watts and a norm power of 295 watts. One word, incredible. So John, this is something that is pretty incredible and is potentially is gonna last in the history books. You've just broken a three hour barrier that no other cyclist has done. How does that actually feel? Yeah, you're right, it hasn't sunk in. <laughs> no, that's, that, that, that's surreal. I've been, I've been inspired in the past by uh, Roger Bannister running the sub four minute mile, and I don't even pretend to be the kind of athlete that he was. And I, I, I'm fascinated by his story because I don't think he was, he would, would have admitted he wasn't the best in the world at the time, but he had the gumption to get there before anyone else did. So what would you say to uh, the young audience out there who are just getting on their bikes, they're just just riding 100 miles, you know, and what, what kind of hints and tips would you give them? Yeah, I, I think the bicycle is a wonderful tool for expressing yourself and discovering yourself. And, and there's, there's lots of other records and things that I've chased in the past. Um, and I've grown as a person. So, you know, first and foremost, just, just enjoy riding your bike and, and find the challenges that are out there for you, whatever appeals to you. And, you know, you're, you might surprise yourself. I mean, if I can ride at 34 mile an hour for 100 miles, then, you know, plenty is possible. So there you have it. Sub three hour, 100 mile unassisted time trial record smashed by Jonathan Schubert. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you give it a big thumbs up and let us know in that comment section below what you thought of this insane feat of speed, power, and endurance. <sighs> Unreal. All right. I better not break this thing now.